Hey guys, I'm gonna do a three-year ownership review of my 2010 Nissan Murano. My journey with Murano unexpectedly started three years ago, just before the pandemic started back in 2019 summer, after I flooded Volkswagen Jetta in a flooded rainwater, and I needed a daily commuter replacement urgently. After failing to find a good used Lexus that meets my needs for several weeks, I rushed to buy this Murano just to overcome the daily commuting challenge wife and I had from sharing just one car and going to two different locations. This Murano was the highest priced LE model, which meant it has fully loaded options and the sticker price was close to $40,000. It had 125,000 miles and I only paid 5,200, which was right in between trading and private sellers uh, prices according to Kelly's Blue Book at the time. That meant this Murano had depreciated about 88% in value and I was buying it only for 12% of the original sticker price. After buying the car, I noticed the engine oil was very low, so I immediately took it to the Nissan dealer on the way home for an oil change. And to my surprise, they also performed full complimentary inspection of the car. The dealer quoted more than $6,000 in repairs. Say what? Say what? <laughs> for oil leaks, coolant leak, torn CV axle boot, worn struts, worn tires, etc., etc. It was a scorching 100 degrees that day, so I didn't get to do a full inspection, but I did see some of the issues, but this was more than I expected. $6,000 in repair? Even though I had the Murano for three years, I only drove it for about 6,000 miles because I had bought a Lexus GS300 just a month after Murano, and due to the pandemic, I wasn't really driving uh, neither car too much because I was working from home. But let me go over the long list of maintenance and repairs I had to do just in 6,000 miles. I already mentioned the first oil change being done at the dealer and I got the second oil change at the dealer about 4,000 miles later. And I should mention that after the first oil change, the dealer told me that Murano had hardly any oil left. And before I went to the second oil change, I had to also put in about two quarts of oil. So that meant this car was probably burning about a quart of oil every thousand miles. It's not super bad, but I, I think it's on a little bit on the heavier side. I also replaced the engine hood struts so that I can easily work on the car. Next, I replaced the engine air filter and cabin air filter. Not sure why, but the cabin air filter was soaking wet. I mean, it was literally dripping wet. I literally had to vacuum out the remaining water out of the cabin air filter housing with a shop vac and a small hose. And I did some troubleshooting, but I never figured out the cause. I replaced the uh, front and rear wipers. Uh, also, I only received one key and the key fob cover was all worn. So I bought a uh, cover to protect it since the replacement key can cost hundreds of dollars. While at it, I also replaced the battery since it was periodically not working. Next, I worked to replace the right front CV axle that had the uh, torn boot and some of the grease was leaking out and it was actually getting worse the more I drive. But this was incredibly difficult to remove. I worked on it for days and I couldn't get it out. So I ended up calling a mechanic that I sold a flooded Volkswagen Jetta to, uh, to come help at my home to replace it. And once he got home, uh, he told me that I actually bought the wrong part. I needed to get the full length and I only bought the half length. So we ended up running to the uh, auto parts store and getting a, a, a correct part and finishing that work. Also with oil dripping uh, to the floor, I had to replace the uh, oil cooler O-ring, which is located just behind the oil filter housing. After that, I did a pressure test and found a, uh, a couple of small holes in the radiator that was leaking coolant. So I replaced it, but while at it, I also replaced the uh, AC condenser just because the part was cheap and uh, I didn't want to go through all the hassle of removing and reinstalling and recharging coolant and AC. And since I was working from home and not driving Murano much, the battery kept draining and wouldn't start the car if I don't drive it for two weeks. 
I tried to do a parasite battery drain uh, test a couple of times, but I couldn't really find the source that was draining the battery. So I ended up having to replace the battery, uh, but this problem, you know, persisted even after the battery change. This was my first SUV and it was very handy to move large objects and uh, I was really torn between selling it because I'm not driving it much and but there were so many issues that needed repair but with the pandemic peaking at the time I didn't want to meet random strangers to come test drive the car so I ended up delaying the sale at the time. Then on one night, the car started to misfire and ran rough for a couple of minutes, so I was rushing to get back home, and I never made it. The car died about two miles away, and I ended up getting it towed home. And at that point, both wife and I were thinking, I think we're done with Mirano. Since I can't sell the car with broken alternator and non-starting car, I had to fix it. Due to the confined location of the alternator, replacing it without removing the AC compressor was not an easy DIY at home, but I got it done. And looking back, I think it was actually the melted alternator connector that was bad and not the alternator itself because I saw other videos where they're all showing uh, melted connectors. Up until now, my experience with Murano was about 80% bad and maybe 20% good. But interestingly, strange things happen in life and sometimes a bad situation can lead to a good outcome. Although I have few YouTube videos before, I wasn't really seriously into it. But I credit uh, this alternator replacement video for really uh, raising my interest in YouTube channel development. This also changed my sentiment on dealing with broken things around the house. Before anything breaks and I was like, oh no, another thing I have to fix. But what's interesting is with the YouTube channel and as a YouTube content creator, now my mind is like, oh, another potential YouTube content. Ha ha ha. Thank you again, Mirano. Now back on the Mirano repairs and maintenance, while replacing the uh, alternator, I also replaced the dry belt since I had to remove it anyway. Since I had the right tire removed, I also was able to troubleshoot and replace the uh, washer pump that was uh, intermittently not working and also fix the washer filler neck that was leaking the washer fluid. Also, I saw more oil leak from the oil pressure sending unit, so I replaced that as well. And since the car idled a little bit rough on cold start, I cleaned the mass airflow sensor and the throttle body. And a little bit after that, I also replaced the PCB valve, hoping that it may slow the oil burning issue. And it seemed like every time I drive the Murano out at night, something goes wrong. This time, coolant leaked very fast, and I got a check engine light, and I barely made it home. So I fixed the leak and I had to refill the coolant again. And this coolant, Nissan coolant is not cheap. After all these fixes, the car finally felt reliable. So this time I started to work on badly worn interior. First, I restored the worn gear knob with the vinyl paint and that turned out super nice. So I continued to restore the scuffed up steering wheel and then the center console and then the windows switch trims. Up until now, these restorations took a little effort, but the results were outstanding and they held up very well. Back about 10-15 years ago, a bunch of cars from all makers like Toyota, Lexus and, and other brands they all had dashboard failures where the dashboard surface would crack and they would become sticky and shiny. Well, the Murano was not sticky or shiny, but it had cracked in many places. I called around and most places would only replace it if, if I bring a brand new dashboard. Otherwise, they would not do a repair work. I found one place that was willing to wrap the dashboard with uh, leather for about 500 bucks, and I'm not even sure that's a real leather. But I decided I would never recoup that cost when selling it. So it took a lot of tedious work of filling the cracks and, and then doing the vinyl painting. But, uh, you know, I got it done. I was not totally happy with the result, but it made what was really ugly to something that is not very noticeable until you get really close. Also, the rear pockets on the back of the front seats were torn and they were flapping around and it, it looked really bad. So 
I ended up taking out the front seats uh, to fix those. But a week later, I started to get airbag warning lights. So I did end up fixing the, uh, the airbag warning light, but with so many issues we had to deal with just in 6,000 miles of driving. In fact, I've been driving over 40 some years and I must say this is the car that gave me the most amount of trouble in the shortest amount of miles that I drove. And that leads to my overall summary review of Murano. So in summary, I had 10 maintenance work that totaled $411, nine mechanical repairs that totaled 1333 and six interior repairs that totaled $77. So that all adds up to $1,821. But this is mostly parts cost since my labor was free. Had these services were done at the shop, you know the total would have been at least double. And that's not counting another $1,500 to replace the four tires and four struts, which are all badly worn. Therefore, since this is just an extra car that we hardly drive, rather than incurring more uh, major cost, we decided to sell it to CarMax for just 5,000 bucks, which is just $200 less than the price I paid three years ago. So the cost of owning this Murano for 6,000 miles came out to be about $2,000, and that's not including the insurance and gas. Let's go have a look at the Kelly Blue Book price. So this is the 2010 Nissan Murano LE with 101,000 miles and I already put in all the options uh, that are relevant for this car and let's look at the trading price ranges between 3700 to 5300 with the median being 4500 and like I said I got 5000 from Carbacks let's look at the private party uh, it's somewhere around 5200 to 7400 with the median being about 6300 so um, I could have gotten a little bit more uh, had I sold privately, but um, it was okay. Uh, 5000 was good enough. Now let's go look at the carcomplaints.com website. By the way, I'm not sponsored by neither site. I'm just sharing information with you guys. So if you come here and pick the car, Nissan, and then pick the Murano, then you will come to this. And you, as you can see, the amount of complaints that have... Uh, been reported and if you look at the the 2010 model that I got the number one issue is the transmission in fact right after I bought the car I did a lot of research on Nissan Murano and the the most costly and uh, most worrisome uh, repair for this car is the CVT I found so many issues where uh, their CVTs are going out, you know, at 60K, 80K. I didn't have any issues and it shifted smoothly. So it could be related to maybe how people are driving the car and maybe how the transmission was serviced, the fluid change, uh, but be aware. And then of course you saw all the interior that I had to fix and interior accessories are number two issues. Now let's go look at some of the other models like 2009 seems to be the worst model in fact you probably want to avoid anything early you know 2009 and earlier there seems to be a lot of issues here okay let's go look at 2009 wow look at that brake problems i didn't have any issues with uh, my car but looks like that's a there's a lot of complaints about that uh, transmission okay again that's uh, at the top of the list see all the transmission failures so uh, let's go look at the some the older ones here 2006 steering problem interior accessory now this is the earlier generation uh, so let's stick with the uh, the second generation which runs from 2009 to 2014 i believe again for second generation transmission is the number one problem let's go to the next generation app then make difference see the transmission continues to be wow by far biggest problem and also interior accessory problems so anyway but before you buy the car uh you if you're interested in mirano you probably want to come here and check this out and then perhaps pick the ones that have lesser uh complaints okay in summary i think you do get more feature values for the money from nissan cars initially at least but over time, the questionable reliability issues and additional maintenance costs 
you know, they could actually drive to a higher cost of ownership. So, you know, be aware. I hope you guys enjoy the video and are having better luck with your Mirano. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.